Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. I really appreciate it. Wow, what a humbling introduction. Greetings. It's a delight to be here. I'm going to spend some time with you sharing as much as I can in the knowledge of a mass over the years in the arena of what I call relationship marketing, which is really what we've all been doing for many, many years. It's that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And all the online social networking, social media has allowed us to do, is take what we, we would normally do in a physical environment like this, you've all been to different mixers and things like that, and then take it online. And I think what frightens people most is the fear of being exposed, of sharing something private, or not, not having a private life, or doing it wrong, or making a mistake in the public eye, or uh, just not knowing the rules and the protocol and the etiquette. So hopefully by the end of our time today, then I will have lifted the veil and you'll all get these big light bulb moments and go, oh my gosh, I get it now, like, and start to really embracing social media so that you can bring in a lot more business into your facilities because ultimately that is the goal, that's what it is. It isn't about necessarily going out and making a bunch of friends or uh, sharing what you had for dinner or that you're petting your dog or your cat or anything like that. It's really <laughs> about building the relationship such that these people come and do more business with you. I'm going to be asking a few questions. I got some video for you. You've got a complete copy of my whole slide deck. Take notes. Uh, I am leading a breakout session at 1.45 and I'm specifically going to walk you through a 10-step strategy. For those of you who really want to go deeper into tactics and strategy, that'll be in my breakout at 1.45. And then later this afternoon, I think it's back-to-back, -back, isn't it, about uh, 3 o'clock, Ken, uh, I'm doing a completely open Q&A. So if you feel like after this session that you really have a bunch of questions and we don't manage to quite get to them, know that there's about an hour this afternoon I'm going to just do total open Q&A on anything planned. And that's my favorite thing to do, by the way. I always like to say to people, ask me any question under the sun about social media in general, Facebook in particular, and I will know the answer. And if I don't, I'll find out for you. <laughs> Without further ado, I would like to go ahead and uh, share a little bit about my country. Those of you can probably hear a little bit of an accent in my voice and my a little uh, brogue, and uh, this is actually from the old course. Okay, that's about a four-minute video. You can find that on YouTube. Just look under YouTube, Mari Smith, Scotland. You'll find it. it's about a four-minute video. It was a photo montage I made when I went back for a visit in 2009. I lived in Scotland 20 years, 78 to 98, and my parents are originally from Scotland, though I was born in Canada. I spent the first 12 years there. So, uh, any Canadians in the room? All right, yeah, go Canada, eh? So, uh, <laughs> and then I moved from Scotland to San Diego in 99, and uh, my accent really mellowed out. So you're going to hear me saying things like out and about, and I pronounce my O's, and I'll say A, eh, and then I'll be dropping into the brogue, I'll be rolling my R's. So, <laughs> and then I'm like 12 years in California, so I've been all Californiaized. And I think when I first came to this country in uh, uh, 99, I really had the, the, the thick, thick brogue, and, and people would be like, what on earth is she saying? I see this blank look come over their face, and they're like waiting for the subtitles. So uh, I actually made an effort to enunciate more properly, so uh, that you'll hear the accent come and go. But anyway, so of course you guys know you're all golf fanatics, and you know that golf was originally the modern game anyway, was founded in Scotland, and this is the, uh, that's actually Edinburgh Castle, what I showed you before is the, the old course at uh, St. Andrews, and, and the 20 years I lived in Scotland, I never had been to St. Andrews, and I went over there in 2009 and, and I took a trip, that's where those photos are from. I just find this little fact fascinating that it was King James II, the first documented note of, uh, of the modern golf, as they call it, was 1457, and King James II banned it as an un unwelcome distraction to learning archery, how funny is that? <laughs> yes, well... Anyway, obviously, it didn't, the band didn't last long. I just explained about uh, my background there being, a, a, I described myself as a bubbly Scottish Canadian, a relationship marketing, and my background for 10 years, since 99, has been very much immersed in the world of internet marketing, new websites and copywriting and HTML, and not, not so much coding. I know just enough coding to be dangerous. But I, know, I really understand the internet plus relationships so in 2007, when I got introduced to Facebook and I was on a beta team for a Facebook application, I was testing that out and it was literally like all of the different career paths and different skills and talents over the years emerged and became like this social media was made for me. It's just, it's just been an absolute passion of mine. Uh, Fast Company dubbed me the Pied Piper of Facebook. 
And uh, then my, wrote my first published book came out last year, Facebook Marketing is a bestseller now. In fact, yesterday and, uh, I flew in from San Diego via uh, Houston and I went, I always like to make a beeline to the bookstores and I look for books and this is part of my relationship marketing. I take my trusty iPhone wherever I go. Any iPhone people in the room? Yeah, wave it proudly. <laughs> Such an Apple gal. So anyway, I go to the bookstore and I look for books written by authors who are fairly well known uh, or people that I might know and I take a picture of my iPhone and I send it up to Twitter. Uh, that's a photo, it's called TwitPic. There's a few photo apps, but I post it up so that my followers can see me tweeting, sending a message to an author of that book, and it builds rapport and relationship. And uh, anyway, I hadn't seen my own book yesterday on the top shelf right next to a couple by Donald Trump, which I thought was kind of cool. So I posted that on Twitter and Facebook, so all part of the, the uh, relationship marketing. But anyway, so what's happened really in social media in the last two to three years is created a whole new world. It's a fundamental paradigm shift in how we do business. There is no getting away from it. It is not a fad, it is not a trend. You cannot have the ostrich strategy and put your head in the sand and figure it's gonna go away. It is changed forever. So it's a beautiful thing that you guys are here with me here today because it's perfect. And no matter where you were at with your knowledge, uh, I really uh, intend that you take away some, some good practical insights today. Fundamental paradigm shift, I mentioned that. It's really about being inclusive. It's no longer them and us, like we're the smart ones and then our, we're gonna market to our audience. No, you involve them, you involve and you include and you engage and it's conversational and it's two-way. There is this whole, uh, these two words get thrown around a lot, transparency and authenticity. And it's like, yes, as a business, you want to be fairly transparent as a, as a person. Here's the thing, the distinction I make, I didn't put this piece in the slide, but I think it's a good, uh, point to make that you, you, you're like, you're, there's you as a person and then there's you and your business. So there's your personal life and there's your professional life. When it comes to social media, people love to engage with people that share a little about themselves. Family, hobbies, or travel are three of the big areas that people love to hear about. So you could be sharing little messages on Facebook or Twitter about that. If you have an account that's in your own name, maybe not necessarily if the account is in your business name, we'll get into that in a moment. But here's the thing, so you've got your personal, your professional life, they're kind of a, the, the line between them has become blurred, if you will. It's a little bit fuzzy, so there's an overlap. But the cool thing about this transparency aspect is that you have a third category I call private. I make a distinction between my personal life and my private life. So I decide there's certain aspects of my life that go into that private category and they never get shared online or in public anywhere. And that gives me a real strong sense of confidence knowing that there's nothing you can find out there on the internet that I'm ever going to be uncomfortable with. And I, I really encourage you to have that distinction in your mind too and it allows you to have a lot more comfort and safety around what you share. Okay, um, conversational two-way mentioned about that. Here's the thing too, the level playing field, you see anybody, anybody now can get out there and go and tap into the masses, the, 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 all the Twitter followers and the 500, six, we're getting close to 600 million active users on Facebook. We'll get into some Facebook stats in a moment. But these are all people who are ready to come and do business with you. There's brides and grooms getting married every second and they might be coming and using your facility. People looking to book a dinner, people looking to bring their friends to your golf course or club or, or whatever different offers that you have and they wanna come and uh, they don't know about you because you're not visible uh, in these social spaces. The beauty of Facebook is people are spending extraordinary amounts of time there anyway, their eyeballs glued to the screen. You may as well come into their awareness and go, hello, <laughs> come and play here. And that's really uh, what, we're, what we're talking about here. You've got the customers and prospects right at your fingertips. With that, I would like to show you a video, and I've put them right in your slides of where you can access them. I'll put the direct links that you can go later. You've got colleagues or bosses or whomever, that these two videos are powerful to really have that shift in your mind and go, oh my gosh, like Ken had said, that, that, that real revolutionary uh, uh, moment where you think, okay, there's something to this. And the one I'm going to show you is called social media ROI, obviously return on investment. I think that's one of the big myths out there is, well, gee, you know, if I put 
uh, time and effort and money resources into this social thing? Does it just mean I'm going to be sitting around talking about my, you know, what I had for dinner and petting my dog and my cat and things like that, taking the trash out, yawn, yawn, who wants to know about that? Rather, how can I know that, you know, dollar in equals dollar, dollar out? And this particular movie, the social media ROI, it shows you several examples, very, very powerful, and to go ahead and show, uh, share that with you. So, some interesting stats and facts in there. <clears throat> Gary uh, Vaynerchuk, anybody here heard of Gary Vaynerchuk? Wow, oh, I see a couple hands at the back. Uh, on Twitter, his uh, handle, his ID is Gary V, V-E-E, -E, and uh, he wrote a book called Crush It. He is a sommelier, they call him the social media sommelier, and his dad started a, a, a winery. And he took his family wine business, you saw there, from $4 million a year in revenue to $50 million a year in revenue using social media, and here's how he did it. He started a online video wine tasting. He's got a very exuberant and passionate personality, very colorful personality, and uh, just a delight to, to learn from. And now he has this enormous following of people that tune in to watch these videos. And I was thinking about that, how that applies to you in the golf industry and how you might incorporate video into having a YouTube channel, adding Facebook, uh, uh, video onto your YouTube, uh, sorry, adding video onto your Facebook page uh, because the visibility you get with your Facebook videos is extraordinary. So we'll go into some more specifics uh, as we progress here. So, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so Facebook stats and facts. 600 million active users. Facebook is absolutely the largest social network on the planet. Started in 2004 by uh, several Harvard dropouts. Who here has seen the movie The Social Network? A few of you? Okay. Some of it's fact, most of it's fiction. <laughs> I think you probably know. Mark's actually an extraordinary human being. I see him as the Bill Gates of our modern times, an absolute visionary. Uh, I don't think he set out necessarily to be the largest social network in the world or to become the youngest billionaire, uh, but there you go, he is. A lot of speculation about the value of the company. Just recently received 50 uh, million, uh, 500 million investment from Golden, Goldman Sachs. Half of these users log on daily and they're spending an average of 55 minutes. Remember I talked about the eyeballs on the screen. That is the people who are on for five minutes and five hours a day averages out to 55 minutes. So you, your goal here is to capture some of that attention uh, and, and free, ideally free, using a, what's called a Facebook fan page or Facebook business page. Mobile, 200 million of those users are actually on their accessing via their mobile device and they're twice as active. Now, the beauty of accessing your potential customers through mobile is there's many other different ways as well. There's Facebook, but there's also uh, what's called LBS, which is location-based services. Anybody here heard of Foursquare? Okay, where is, uh, is it Cheryl that I met on the front desk this morning? Yes, yes, and you, you told me you, were, you checked in on Foursquare and everything, right? You got this whole thing down. She's my new BFF. You got any questions, see Cheryl? <laughs> she knows lots about social media. The whole, I don't want to overwhelm you. I want to try to keep this as basic as I can, and we're going to go into more depth in my breakout and then the Q&A. But I just want you to kind of make a note or plant a seed in your mind that in addition to Facebook and Twitter, which we're really going to focus on Facebook in this session, but you then want to consider having a presence on Twitter. It's a super easy way to reach your prospects. And then at some point down the road, you want to phase this out. Don't try to do it all at once. You might just say, okay, just going to focus on Facebook you know, for a few months. We'll get a mastery of that, and we'll bring in Twitter. And then we'll look at the LBS, a location-based service, which is the most popular one other than Facebook places, it's called. It's called Foursquare, where people would come to your premises. They'd come to your club or your facility and they pull up on their phone this app, this application, and they basically say they're checking in, and they're saying to all their friends, and they might have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds, and they're saying, I am here. And it goes by GPS, right? It, the phone knows where they are, and it puts a little pinpoint there, and it, then it broadcasts it out to all of their friends, fans, followers. Now, again, back to this point about privacy. People get really freaked out. Oh my gosh, why would you tell people where you are? My house is empty. <laughs> come and burgle me. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, there has been stories about that. So you want to obviously use discretion, 
But there's something about a lot of early adopters use these uh, Foursquare and location-based services where they, they really embrace this idea of, of letting people know exactly where they are. And what happens is that they're, if, say they had friends in the area, they'll come, oh my gosh, I'm at the club too, or I'm minutes away, let's go and have a round of golf. And it's actually a way to, to, to have your network with you on the go, if you will. I, even in the industry that I'm in, uh, I didn't start using the Foursquare until about a year ago. And my first check-in, I only went a few blocks to my local health food store. And my first check-in was uh, uh, picking up some uh, healthy groceries. So glad that my fierce Rottweiler and my six foot seven sumo boyfriends at home. <laughs> 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 Don't touch my house. <laughs> Anyway, that's just a little more advanced for those of you who are already really embracing social media and you're thinking, well, what else can I do? Be thinking about uh, looking at Foursquare. Another one's called Gowalla, uh, G-O-W-A-L-L-A, Gowalla.com. Uh, and then you've also got Yelp. And I would imagine most, uh, most of you have some kind of a presence, especially if you have a restaurant, you have some kind of a presence on Yelp. And be here, no, and check in on their Yelp. Uh, reviews or presence, yeah, that's huge. That's Y E L P. You want to really be managing that and watching, seeing, checking. A huge part of social media is listening. In fact, there's a new officer, if you will, a new executive that people are talking about called a CLO. And a CLO is a chief listening officer. And a chief listening officer's job is to watch like the Google alerts, look at sites like Yelp. Twitter, Facebook, what are people saying about you and your establishment out there? And what can you do to make sure that you're maintaining good relations or that you see a prospective customer, you're drawing them in, you're interacting with them. Remember that engaging part, that two-way conversation, interactive part. Now, and then there's an aspect too. Who here has a website for their business? Fantastic. It's just see every single hand raised in the room. Anybody not? Anybody just has no website, no internet presence? Okay, okay. What, uh, what business are you in? Do you mind if I ask? You have a private, okay. So she has a private, just to repeat that, she has a private club and their membership is a little older and, they, and, and also the club themselves don't want people just kind of traipsing in. So, so that, I could see that there's strategy in that. Um, the one disadvantage, though, would be that how can you reach new members? If you're looking to attract new members and you're really relying on, on the uh, old school marketing, if you want to call it that. Um, but I can see, I can see uh, reasons for that. Um, the thing with having a website, the reason I pulled this stat up, if you have a website, there's a way for you to integrate Facebook and what are called social plugins, and that is if you have a site that you're, you're, uh, is an open site and that you know, the public are checking it out, uh, the Facebook like button, which came out in April last year, is one of the most powerful inventions that Mark Zuckerberg came up with because people are surfing your site and they see something they like on there, be it uh, a piece of merchandise or you know, a, a, a clothing item or a restaurant menu or whatever it might be, pictures, photos, videos, I don't know what you all have in your sites, but they just click that little like button and voila, that posts out onto their Facebook profile and shares with all their friends with a link back to your site. And it's a relatively easy button to add. You don't have to be a super programmer or anything like that. It's called the Facebook like button. And uh, a quarter of a million people a month actually engage with Facebook that way that I'm talking about, kind of like clicking the like button or looking, they join your fan page right on your website. With that, I'd like to do a little poll. Who here has a Facebook personal profile? Personal profile. Okay, quite a large number of you. Do you mind if I ask who does not? Okay, quite, okay. This is slightly higher than normal, than most audiences I speak with. <laughs> For those who raise their hand who do not, do you mind if I ask the reasons why you have not set up a Facebook profile? <clears throat> Did you have your hand up? So her husband has one, so she just accesses Facebook peripherally through him. <laughs> you had your hand up, yeah. I'm just concerned that it's time consuming. Right. Time consuming. Time consuming. Yeah. The average Facebook user has 130 friends and they use it 
predominantly for personal reasons, to connect with family and friends around the world. I think there's been more school reunions in the last three or four years than there has in the previous 30 to 40 because of Facebook. And, and it's a wonderful way for parents and grandparents to stay in touch with their children and grandchildren around the world. It immediately makes the world more uh, connected. So that's the predominant use of Facebook. These 600 million active users, they're predominantly using it for personal reasons. It's just this wonderful captive audience. But you've got um, a couple of different ways to look at it. There's a way that you can purchase ads. You can buy what are called social ads and you can make them ridiculously targeted. It's the most targeted traffic that your ad money could ever buy. Um, anybody here has uh, dabbled with Google AdWords? If you ever like purchased yeah, a few hands? So it's similar, same idea where you're, you're purchasing ads to go down on the right hand side of Google or Facebook, but they're geared towards, specifically with Facebook, you could say the exact location, the gender, the age, their likes and interests, and you know, everybody that has the word golf as, as, a, as an activity that they love, you could be buying an ad that only is rendered when, that, when they're surfing, that, the people that like golf are surfing the, uh, the uh, Facebook site. Okay, so um, the thing is, in order to have a business presence, you have to have a personal account. Or, if you never plan to have a personal account, Facebook has this very little known account called a business account. So you could just go to facebook.com and you'll see underneath the little green button where it says sign up, it'll actually say, you know, create a presence for my brand or band, a brand or business, or band in fact. And that way you can have, you can have your business page and the only thing that a business account allows you to do is have this fan page, this business page, and buy ads. Other than that, you can't like surf around Facebook and check out people's photos and click like or comment. Uh, so that's just an option I'm putting out to you there for those of you who prefer not to have a personal presence at all. Okay, so there was a large number of you that had the personal profile. How about for your business, who here has what's called the Facebook fan page or business page for your business? Okay. Only about 20 people, it looks like. All right, that's my number one goal for you this, this weekend, this week, whatever this is, this conference. Uh, is, it, is you absolutely put that on your top of your priority list and uh, hopefully by the end of my session today if you're able to, I know there's several overlapping breakouts, if you're able to come to one or other of my uh, sessions this afternoon I'll give you even more information. I do have uh, uh, copies of the, the Facebook marketing book, it's a great, it says an hour a day, the idea by the way, a quick disclaimer, it's not that you're going to spend an hour a day marketing on Facebook, the hour a day is that you're learning, you can, it's like a college course or taking yourself through in an hour a day to learn it. But I just really, really encourage you to, to get yourself set up with a Facebook fan page. One of the things you're going to, and I'll go deeper into that in the strategy session, is just decide whose account, who's going to be the admin, the administrator, to set up that account. I actually recommend you have two administrators. But it's the, yeah, because you just never know if something happens to somebody's login, you want to have a backup, you want to have somebody else uh, in there. Your personal account is completely protected. If you're an administrator for a fan page, a business page, you'll never be able to post. In fact, I just posted a blog post about that this morning. But Facebook set it up that way for privacy reading reasons. You can't just kind of write all over your own page wall and expose your profile. You're, you're actually very protected. Facebook is in the news a lot for their privacy, um, you know, uh, <laughs> bending the rules, pushing the envelope. The interesting thing is that it's so complex. It's actually the most granular privacy settings of all social networks out there. And unfortunately, what happens is, is, you, is the users uh, don't understand the depth to which they can actually control that privacy. And Mark Zuckerberg does tend to be a bit of a maverick, and he'll, 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 he's one of those people that, what is it, he, he's better to ask for forgiveness than seek permission. I think that's Mark's middle name, right? <laughs> anyway, so as we move along, you'll, you'll pick up some more uh, nuggets. Now, uh, I mentioned about, I think personally, that Mark, Mark is an absolute visionary. When you really understand what his mission is for Facebook, it's actually to help the world to be more connected and to communicate more effectively such that world problems might be solved. That always moves me. I just, when you think of, the, of never before in our history, have we had a one common platform where 600 million people can connect and communicate and talk and relate? I mean, it was through social media that we've had some dramatic changes in our planet already. All right, so in fact, I'm ahead of myself here because I was talking about this already, that you need to have some absolute basics for you to know 
a, a personal account means that you have a personal profile. You really are only allowed one. Over the age of 13, you're only allowed one personal profile. Because some people say, well, I'll have a profile for my personal use, and then I'll set up a secondary one, and that'll be the administrator for my business page. I would caution against that because you run the risk of losing both accounts. You're only allowed one personal account or one business account if you don't intend to ever have a personal presence. Remember, you can adjust your privacy settings, and I've put in there uh, a little link for you uh, to a blog post that I wrote on five ways that you can, you can control your privacy settings and market to your friends and your fans. You can have up to 5,000 friends. There's only a tiny, tiny percent of the, all of Facebook that have gone anywhere near that. Uh, I chose to use my personal profile as a, st as a strategic way to do professional networking because then you can actually connect with people and write on their wall, they write on your wall, you can like, comment, you can build up relationships uh, if you wish to do it that way. But most of you I'm going to advise to just go ahead and focus on the, the fan page. Remember the average user just has 130. And you can use your profile for just personal or a blend of personal and professional. All right, so then the business fan page, you do need the personal account or the business account. I mentioned that. The nice thing is you can have multiple. If you have uh, several different facilities that you manage, you could actually have a page for each one. The beauty of the fan page, by the way, is that it's fully indexed on Google. Any content you put on your fan page is findable on Google. You can have unlimited fans. You can message all your fans uh, at once, too. You can share photos, events, videos, facts, promotions, specials, you name it. So what I'd like to hear from you, I'd love to know, because I'm just guessing, I'm just assuming that most of you are, are at this conference and specifically this session to learn how to make more money, to get more business into your facility using social media. Does anybody have a different objective? Okay, so what I'd love to know is just shout out what are some of the revenue streams? What are some of the ways that you generate revenue? Because I don't, I'm not a, a, a golf professional. I, 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 I know my business. You guys know yours. So uh, I know obviously some of you do weddings. You've got private memberships. You've got restaurants. Lessons. Golf lessons. Club thank you. Club sales. Club sales thank you. Player participation in tournaments, fantastic. Yes, in the back? Announcing arrivals, Announcing arrivals to the shop. New fashion, beautiful, wonderful. That would be a great one for pictures too. Yeah, anything else? Revenue streams? No, everything that's already been said already? Yes? Just generally getting people to come on the property. Getting people to come on the property, yeah. Do you know they say that it actually takes, uh, it takes more effort to go out and find new business than it does to retain the existing business? And so one of the things that you can do through social media is to keep in regular contact with your existing clientele through the Facebook and Twitter. And one of the things I'm going to recommend for everybody, presumably everybody has some kind of a physical establishment, is that when people walk in, they walk up to the reception desk or into the store or the restaurant, that you have some kind of a placard. I would even put it on your menus, put it on your golf uh, cards, that, you know, find us on Facebook. Come, we are on Facebook. Use the Facebook logo or the blue F, but def probably best the Facebook logo. And you can get that, actually, let me give you, if you want to make sure that you're going to adhere to the terms, uh, write this down, go to facebook.com slash brand permissions. Facebook.com slash brand permissions. And you'll get the exact logo that you can use and re uh, uh, replicate in your marketing material. Because it's not enough to just go on to Facebook and put up your page and go, okay, I hope people know we're here. You now have to let people know, and similar to what we found in this audience, a lot of your clientele are going to have a presence on Facebook predominantly for personal. They haven't necessarily thought about connecting with you in the business, in the, in the golf arena, but you let them know that through these visual cues. Find us on Facebook. We've got specials there. We're sharing photos. We're sharing videos. We're sharing new clothing items, new menus, restaurant specials, things like that. Yes? That's a great question. So the question is really just from the back, didn't quite hear, is like there's many, many different facets. So there's the, the golf shop, the restaurant, obviously, you know, members. And so who's in charge and, and what information goes onto the page? I'm going to recommend, first of all, I would meet with your, your, your uh, staff, your team, and, and have a discussion about what's possible. Here's the thing, actually, a uh, quick aside, that the number one reason that people fail, quote unquote, with social media is lack of a strategy. 
They just go in there and go, okay, somebody told me to set up a page, now what do we do? And they just throw stuff up and they hope something works. So really, really want to just, because uh, uh, there's no right or wrong way necessarily to do the strategy, but um, I think, I like to go with the path of least resistance. And I would say one, start with one Facebook page for the whole uh, facility, the whole golf club, right? And what you can do, the really cool thing is you can have different tabs, okay? You can have tabs, so you could actually have a tab, I'll show you some uh, images in a moment, for restaurant, you could have restaurant reservations right on your page. You could have one that says shop. Uh, in fact, a great way to do that, let me give you this resource, is tab site, T-A-B-S-I-T-E, tabsite.com. Uh, they have a free version and a very, very low fee version. Wonderful application. I use it myself on my own fan page. And you can have lots of different tabs in that way represent the different elements. As far as content of what content goes onto your wall, out, out one of my slides, I think it's actually in the next presentation, I talk about actually coming up with a content strategy. Photos, sharing photos gets the highest engagement. That, that you know, they'd say the picture says a thousand words and you see all this information going by on Facebook and people will, their eye will catch pictures. So um, anything you can do with pictures, but you don't want to just do pictures. You can do uh, a couple other things I got suggestions for you, like asking questions and really involving and including. So um, I don't know if you're like, if you have a marketing department or a marketing manager or somebody who, who's in charge of your overall marketing, that person would really be the one that's going to be in charge of the social media and really has the kind of final say on what goes on the page or not. Uh, I recommend, in fact, all of you create what I call a, a social media policy. So you're actually going to talk about some rules of what can and cannot be shared. And if, if any of your employees are going to be talking about your facility on Twitter or Facebook or anywhere online, you want to actually give them some guidance on what they can and can't say. Is that helpful? Right, so, oopsie, pressing the pointer. Right button helps. Yeah, Facebook ads, we mentioned about those. And just go to facebook.com slash ads. Real easy. The beautiful thing about Facebook ads is that you can skip the first part, skip step one that's like you're actually building the ad, go to step two and start playing around with some parameters. Put in some you know, uh, age range, some location, some keywords about interest, and it shows you on this running total exactly how many people are in your target demographic. So you can get an idea of that. All right, let's look at some examples of uh, what I found, uh, pulled up some uh, golf uh, facilities that were already using Facebook. This is beautiful Torrey Pines, by the way. I live not too far from there. This is uh, Edgewood Tahoe, and I mentioned about reservations. Well, there is an example of their fan page there, and they do have a little tab right here that says reservations. They're doing really well. I have 7,000 fans, and I really like the content that they're sharing. They seem to be quite interactive. You can see there that they got beautiful pictures and... Uh, and they have uh, their fans are actually interacting and talking with them on the wall. This is so, uh, and I wanted to draw your attention to that. That is actually a, a so opentable.com is, is a, a, a service, a site, a platform that allows restaurants to have this ability to make reservations online. And that's all that Tahoe has done here. Edgewood Tahoe is just put uh, the app. There's an app that you can install on your fan page. People can make reservations right there on your page. So see what I mean about the tabs across the top? And you can have, there's no limit to how many you can have there. Um, and in fact, with the tab site, you could have like a master tab and then open it up and then there's even more tabs under here. The main thing to focus on though is the wall. Uh, this is really where the primary activity happens. This is the wall tab, it's called here. Okay, and you want as much engagement as possible because every time a fan posts something or there's a comment made, that's going out into their profile, into all of their friends. Free visibility for you, free marketing. So dinner reservations, this is a Turnberry Resort, Scotland, and I pulled them up for a reason. I think the next page, uh-huh. Uh, events. So then they were having like a, a there's, a, there's a, a, an app, one of the apps is called events and you'll actually have a tab on your page that says events. Anytime ever you have any kind of an event, highly recommend you take advantage of the Facebook events. It has this little icon there, the little 31, that's uh, events. And, uh, and then these guys are actually running a, a contest. And uh, you can do contests. There are fairly rigorous rules around doing contests on Facebook. 
Um, if ever you wanted to do a contest, you need to actually use what's called a third-party app. You need to use an app. Uh, one of the best ones uh, is called Wildfire. If you just write down wildfireapp, app.com, wildfireapp.com, very, very affordable, wonderful uh, platform that helps you to do contests. Contests are a wonderful way to build buzz. But here's a caveat. I wouldn't just throw up a fan page and immediately do a contest. Wait until you have, a, you know, maybe a thousand or so or 500 to a thousand fans first. You need a little bit of traction before you can just dive into a contest. Uh, that's what I loved actually, by the way, about this site too. And uh, they have this way down the bottom. This is a whole screenshot of the Turnberry Resort. And then way down the bottom here, I put it up in, in bigger writing here. They're saying, you know, join our social scene. Remember I said about once you've got your Facebook and your Twitter, you need to go out in the physical environment, so people that are like the, the foot traffic that's coming into your store or your uh, restaurant or, or you know, to play golf, let them know visually, hey, we're on Facebook now, but also on your website, you want to add in. And ideally, when I say above the fold, uh, that basically means that as soon as you go to a website, you don't need to scroll down. That's what's called in the industry the fold. So it would, they, they have theirs way down at the bottom. I would move this way up top here. Beautiful site, by the way. They have a lot of movement going on. A nice uh, video happening there. Uh, help me pronounce this right. Is it Bolingbroke? Bolingbroke. Thank you. Bolingbroke. Um, so they got a special, talking about here, uh, a, a special at their Nest Bar, talking about how, how much you know their, their beers are, things like that, and they got the, the fans are interacting. So it's actually, the, again, this is back to that content strategy of thinking about what are we going to share. Uh, it can be a mixture of all kinds of different things. Definitely weddings. Anybody here do weddings at your facility? A few of you, a few of you, okay. People love to see pictures of weddings, definitely. If there's any um, way that you can show off pictures of weddings, I would highly recommend that you do that. And the seasonal or holiday offer, so this was a Sandis Sandiston? Sandiston. Sandiston? Thank you. And uh, they are talking about Valentine's Day coming up very soon doing a Valentine's Day special and talking about you know putting in a special code to go ahead and get, get a special deal. Uh, the Hilton Lost Cabos and customer loyalty. I love that and some of these can be used. Here's where people get like very very open and sharing. This guy Nick here is a fan and he's talking about how the staff treated him like a king and what I loved about what the Hilton did is they and this is this is something that um, you want to appoint. Someone needs to be in the in your company the community manager, frequently called a community manager or an online community manager or a social media manager, probably community manager is going to be good. And they're going to be the one, ideally, uh, I go into quite a bit more depth in the other session, but real quick, it's basically someone who's very passionate, a people person, gregarious, who loves people, loves golf, loves your facility, is very knowledgeable about your facility, and it doesn't need to take up a lot of time. That's the thing, unless you're you know, a huge, huge facility and you're going to get a lot of activity. But initially, initially, a few minutes a day. Initially, even one or, one or two pieces of content a day is all you need. You don't have to be on there all day, every day. But what I loved about the Hilton did here is they actually have replied and using people's first names is absolutely one of the most powerful things that you can do. People's first names is uh, the sweetest sounding word in their entire vocabulary. And uh, when you can actually, like these people have done here, thank you for sharing, Nick. And it uh, just makes people feel really special. Quick question? Right. Okay, so three specific questions I'll try to summarize. So the first thing is to try to overcome the, the um, negative uh, perception Facebook's blocked at the club. <laughs> Sorry to laugh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Listen up, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to address these three questions. So first of all, how to get over the negative connotations of Facebook. You don't have to use Facebook. I'll just give you that permission right now. It may be that you guys are doing just fine and maybe all the other different marketing efforts you're, you're doing are working great. But if there's one small opening, it's where your management are not happy with the bottom line. Okay? And that's going to be your leverage. You're going to ideally, if you can, show them that video on the social media ROI. Talk to them about the importance of privacy, having a, you guys control and have a social media policy. You're going to have a meeting with all the staff. You're going to tell them this is what you can post on the wall, this is what you can't. 
People sharing photos of spring break, they can do whatever they like on their personal profile if their privacy settings are set, you know, fairly rigorously. Uh, but they can't just come and free float and, and just put all whatever they want on the fan page. It's got to be business. There might be, you can decide what elements of personality go in there. But the bottom line for, is the bottom line, that you're going to talk to your management of going, you know, here's a way that we can tap into potentially thousands of new members for the club, thousands of new uh, covers at the restaurant or whatever the case may be. And perhaps uh, going in phases and saying to them, let's implement this, let's measure over the next three months and we'll see how we get on. Like it's not they're going to like, go off the deep end and, and have no, there's no return. Look at how you're doing after three months, then go out to maybe six months, okay? So that way you're, you're um, you know, managing it out. Uh, you also mentioned about, uh, okay, negative posts. I saw a lot of heads nodding with that one. Fortunately, Facebook fan pages have um, a spam filter. It's a relatively new feature, it was not there before. So any pure out and out spam is going to be caught in that spam filter. In fact, it's a little too tight. You're going to have to go in there and, and check the spam filter and make sure that you're not losing any bona fide posts. But in this, I'm so glad this point is coming up because this is actually one of the, the great fears around social media. Remember, we were saying one of the biggest uh, uh, reasons for failure is that lack of a strategy. As part of your strategy and your company policy, you've got to know up front there could be some negative uh, comments written about you. Now, if somebody writes something negative and they have good cause, like they're complaining about a meal they ate at the restaurant, are they, hmm? You want to know that, but here's the thing. If, as a company, your policy is it gets deleted the second it goes up or it gets deleted at some point, no matter how quickly you, you catch that, some people are going to see it. This is that piece I'm talking about with the transparency. If you can show to the public that you're not afraid of negative feedback and you handle it gracefully and publicly, and really bending, I'm getting chills saying this, because it's like, you show that customer, you know what, you're right, we messed up. Here's how we're gonna make it up to you, blah, 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 whatever it may be, if they clearly have grounds for their negative feedback. If they don't, you know, still handle it anyway, but you've got to make that discernment between, okay, this kind of feedback, absolutely no way goes anywhere near a wall, this kind of feedback. Like, for example, is 1-800-Flowers, facebook.com slash 1-800-Flowers, they have a tab called reviews. You can actually encourage reviews, and their reviews are so negative. People like bitching and moaning about why they didn't get their flowers, and they, they arrived, and they're all dead and wilted or whatever. But somehow, you know, 1 800 this flowers are just doing fine. But um, they're just actually, their policy is just ignore it. They're not, they're not doing anything about it. So, but it, they're not going out of business, right? They're managing fine. But I, this is where, for me, this relationship marketing piece comes into play. If there is a piece of negative feedback, handle it beautifully, gracefully, promptly, uh, customers always right kind of attitude, looking at ways you can make it up to them and you will actually have potentially a customer for life. And you, do you do that publicly on the yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because the moment somebody posts something negative, you don't know how many eyeballs have seen that between the gap between you, you get to it. And I would encourage somebody to be looking at your fan page every day. Now, I'm going to give you a brand new site. In fact, uh, two posts ago, uh, I blogged about it at marysmith.com. You can find all my blog posts there. And there's a brand new site uh, out of Norway that's called Hyper Alerts. It's not hyperalerts.com hyper because it's a Norwegian site. But they do fan page notifications. And I'm so excited. I basically blew up their servers the other day there because I blogged about it. Everybody like stampede to get this site set up. But you get an email every time there's a post or a comment made on your fan page. That way you don't have to be glued to the fan page if somebody in, the, in, in your office has obviously got access to email. How are we doing on time, Ken? Okay, perfect. Yeah, I know there's just so much. I could spend all day with you, and I, and I hope that, that helps some with your questions. And uh, remember to bring some more up this afternoon if you get a chance. And I'll be around all day. I'm actually here tomorrow as well. Uh, questions the qu between photos and questions you get some tremendous engagement, great, great responses. Uh, this question they just asked, you know, let's have some fun. You love the food at the Hilton, Los Cabos. We want to know what's your favorite food, drink, restaurant. Um, some nice comments. There were 15 different comments there. So that kind of thing you can do just real simple. Some tips for Facebook success. Uh, here's the thing. This is an astounding fact. Some 88% of people 
who join your Facebook page actually do not come back to the page of their own volition. They see and interact with your content in what's called the news feed. And that is when you first log into Facebook, those of you who have an account, and it's an aggregate of all your different friends' activities. Well, the fan page content goes in there too. And Facebook uses complex algorithms to decide what posts go in there. And it's kind of that catch-22 because the more popular your page or an individual post, the more likely it'll show up in the newsfeed of your fans. And that's why I'm talking about doing photos or asking questions or you know, responding and, and hanging in there to get some traction and using all of the different aspects of the, of the traditional offline marketing to make sure people know that you're now on Facebook and, and start getting some momentum going. Photos, I talked about that. One to two posts a day, ideally before noon in your time zone, in your time zone. Uh, gets the best traction, so somewhere between maybe 7 or 8 a.m. and noon. And there's sites, I'll talk about in the other session, about uh, how you can set this up and pre-schedule some things. Uh, but manual posts get actually the best uh, visibility in the news feed. And respond personally anytime you can. I mean, it's really show you're human. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have a whole lot of time to go into Twitter, but real quick, anybody here on Twitter? A few of you, yeah? Personally or professionally? Anybody has a Twitter account for your business? Okay, great, fantastic. Yeah, I love Twitter. Twitter to me is really one of the, one of the sometimes I even recommend, because Facebook is really quite complex. There's a lot of layers to learn. But so sometimes you can go and, and, and start with Twitter instead. At minimum, at minimum, I recommend you go to twitter.com and set up an account, park it for now, in the name best you can, as close as you can. You might have to use an abbreviation or an underscore, the name of your, your facility, the name of your club. Uh, because they're, they're exactly like domain names. Once you've, you, it's been chosen, then that's it. You can actually, content-wise, you can just promote the exact same content as you're putting onto Facebook and on your website. And it's a wonderful way to provide this daily communication that we were talk, talking earlier about with the you know, new uh, items of closing the shop, and specials, and uh, things like that, tournaments, guest days, you name it. can all go out on Twitter. Um, just in case you don't come to my strategy session, I'll give you a quick uh, site to go with Twitter, because Twitter by itself can be like, well, now how do I get followers? And you want to write this down, go to a site called Twello, T-W-E-L-L-O-W. -L -L it's like the word yellow, but with a T-W. So Twello.com. Twello.com has over 30 million Twitter profiles. Uh, and if you were just to search for the keyword golf to see how many people put golf in their bios, there's some like 20,000 or something about people who, who've said that they like golf on Twitter. And you just follow them. You follow them and a lot of them will follow you back. So in the future, this uh, Paul Denae, in the future, those individuals with the most Twitter followers, Facebook friends and fans, LinkedIn recommendations will get the big bucks. This is where we're at. Uh, I know in the book publishing industry, publishers are now if a, a prospective author comes to them, they're like, you know, come back when you've got your social platform built. Uh, they won't even talk to you if you don't have a, a platform. And I've outlined a lot of these challenges, some of we talked with. You can check out uh, a training that I do. You can attend live or virtually. You're welcome to check that out. Any questions at all, please feel free. That's one of the things I really pride myself on, my Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash Smith. The predominant goal of that page is to answer questions about Facebook. So feel free to, to come and post on my wall anytime, um, or Twitter, or anything like that. A little quote from Martin Luther King, true leaders love and respect their followers. Truly my pleasure to serve you today. I hope you got a few insights, and we'll see you again later. Thank you. Thank you.